is still plus politics and today we're looking at the health sector in the country as we gear up for the elections come 2023 and as we decide who we pick to lead us uh, these are some of the issues that we also need to consider or have at the back of our minds and in the studio with me is dr korobo and online we have dr ale robert uh, both of them medical experts and we've been talking about some of the major issues bedeviling uh, the sector dr Alera, before you went off you were talking about the fact that there are not even enough trainers for those who might be uh, you know ready to be doctors and i'm even wondering um with all the strike actions that we've seen with universities and, and all the guys who have to do housemanships and then become resident doctors, there's, there's just a lot to deal with uh, in that sector. And many, many of us might not necessarily understand the realities. We're very quick to knock doctors and knock hospitals uh, for poor performances. But then now uh, we have an opportunity to dig deeper into some of the teething problems, if not some of the things that have really, really crippled the health sector. But I always like to not just look at problems, but solutions. Um, we, we're seeing a lot of people asking for our votes. Some of them are, have even said that they would, you know, turn water to wine uh, if given the opportunity. Um, what should the average Nigerian voter be considering uh, if they ever have to be in a parley with these uh, politicians? What should be the questions that they be asking, especially knowing that anybody could end up in a hospital and this could be uh, their fate? Well, this is, that, is, that, that is actually the crucial question that we need to be answering and something that for me is very, very, very important. You see, I tell people now, in the last three months, I've had to tell people, don't do anything silly or unsafe or anything because even if, if you get into trouble and you need a hospital or a doctor, I don't know where to send you. And, you know, it, it actually stops people, my friends, in their tracks when I tell them that don't call me. I, there's nothing I can do for you. I've, I've watched a friend die. I've watched, I've watched the life seep out of her veins and her eyes go blank. And, and I was standing there and the doctors and nurses were, and there was nothing we could do. Now, this is the reality that everybody needs to think about mm. while they are polishing up their PVC to go and take a vote. So you said something, you said, oh, they're up promising us and turning water into wine. The truth of the matter is that in an emergency situation, you are going to end up spending a hundred times more money than you would have spent if you had planned and prepared for such a contingency. And that is what the majority of Nigerians are finding out that is happening. Hmm. You are now going to places where you get to a hospital and they tell you, put down three million naira. Can you find three million naira on a hop? Who do you call? So we have to now wake up and really face the coffee. This is not about ethnicity. This is not about whose turn it is. This is not about this party, that party, north, south, east, or west. This is not about the color green, red, blue, black, or polka dot. This is who, what can, what do I need to put in place to ensure that we're going to get good leadership that is going to look us square in the face and be able to change the situation that we're facing. Mm. And that is the situation. I don't want anybody telling me about turning water into wine. <laughs> I don't want anybody telling me, and that's what they've been saying. Dr. Korobo, bear me out. When MDCN came and said that, oh, we'll tell the universities to take on twice the number of students who want to do medicine. Who's going to teach them? In which classroom? Hmm. Wow. I These are harsh realities we have to face. We are going to end up paying 10 times more for health than we were paying a year or two ago. Yeah. Talk, or, talking about pay, payments, talking about, I'm so sorry to talk over you, talking about pay, payments for health. Uh, the president recently um, signed the National Health Authority bill into law, and I'm going to get both your thoughts on it. Uh, and the president said that this was done to achieve universal coverage. How much cover does this <laughs> um, National Health Authority bill and, you know, some of the, I mean, we've had NH, NHIS, we've had so many schemes. I don't really know how successful those schemes have been. Dr. Lara, would you care to answer before I come back to Dr. Korobo? I would, I would um, look, let me be very frank and honest with you. I am Dr. Alera Roberts. Today I can wear a green dress. Tomorrow I can wear a green, blue dress. And the next day I can wear a red dress. I'm still Dr. Alera Roberts. What I can do, I can do. What I cannot do, I cannot do. Mm. And that's my opinion on the NHA. Oh, wow. Okay, Dr. Korobo. It is the same wine in a different wine scheme. Oh. Because you are using the same system, you are using the same people. 
with the same mentality, with the same attitude, mm. with the same lack of governance. So what it, difference do we expect? So you're saying that it's it's you know it's not necessarily going to change anything. It's nothing new. Has it changed anything? This has been tw uh, almost eighteen months later. Mm. Has Corbyn. it changed? Dr. Well, first of all, I, I share. I still have to go to the hospital and cannot access care despite the fact that they have NHIS. Mm. And that's only 3% of the population of the country. Mm. Well, first of all, I share Dr. Alero's um, passion. And honestly, I, I'm with her 150%. You know, um, when she speaks, you can hear the passion in her voice. You see, there are some key realities here that we must take time to understand. When we say you have one doctor to 35,000 people, 45,000 people, let me make that simple. It means that in Lagos, for example, here, you would have access to doctors in Lekki, in VI, maybe in Ikeja. But in other areas of Lagos, you will not see a single doctor there. And some people have to travel far just to come to see a doctor. This is the reality, and we need to understand these statistics. You know, if you live in Lekki and you live in VI, ah, what are they talking now? There are hospitals here, hospitals there. But go further down, Passager. Yeah. You're going to find places where you drive for 15, 20, 30 minutes. There's no hospital. There's no doctor. So this is the reality on ground, the ratios. The aspect of not graduating medical, any medical student. We recently graduated 2010 uh, yeah, that's, they ought to have graduated um, in 22, that's in 2010, mm. 2015, 2016 sets. This is 2022. The most of the people that just graduated, I'm talking about University of Port Harcourt, for mm -hmm. example, now, ought to have graduated in 2020. So two years later. So you need to understand what she said. Parents are celebrating that, ah, my daughter or my son just graduated. And Dr. Leroy is telling you they didn't graduate. You don't understand. I'm explaining to you that the people that we just graduated have been in medical school for eight years. Eight years. I'm, we're lecturers. I'm telling you a fact. And, and, and what is the reason for Well, the reason is, like she said, systemic failure, the ASU strike, a lot of factors not in place. You want to make sure that this doctors you train have the necessary skills, have acquired the necessary skills. So, so that's the first fact. Now, she said there that 50 year medical students wrote exams, UK board exams, and they passed. It is a fact. It is not uh, stories. Where I lecture, almost all the students have passed their PLAB 1. So they are living. That's the point I'm telling you. From 50 year, 60 year, they are already planning to go. So mm. these realities are, are very, very serious, and we need, to, we need to be able to face them. For the aspect of the National Health Act and the universal coverage, look, the NHIS pays 750 naira for a person. 750 naira. NHIS pays 1,500 naira for you to see a specialist. These are our realistic values now. I mean, the NHIS, a drug that if you go across the counter, you can buy for, say, 4,500. The NHIS would offer it at 1,800. So what happens? Patients are registered. The few patients that are registered under the NHIS go to the hospital and are not given any care because the figures that the NHIS will pay is not commensurate with reality. Wow. And so, like Dr. Alero said, we are dealing with a systemic failure. This is not about politics. It's not about, you know, like she said, ethnicity, tribalism. We are talking about facts here. Which of the presidential candidates have a grasp of the reality in the health sector? Well, I, I was having a conversation with a representative of the spokesperson of the, of, uh, of the Buhari government, and he said, well, I mean, the vice president was sick and he was treated in a Nigerian hospital. That's a start. Well, That's what the he vice said. president so, was sick, was treated in a Nigerian hospital, that is beyond the reach of the average person. He was treated at the Duchess, part of the Reddington Group. How many people can afford the care? Can we now have the bill of the vice president? 
how much did he spend for his surgery or his care? You know, so that's the reality. How many people can afford to walk into the Duchess and pay? The other aspect you mentioned about gunshot injury and all that, you, you have to understand that healthcare itself has, you know, gradings, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Now, any serious government at the local, state, or federal ought to understand that the government hospitals can't do it alone. So you need private sector. Mm -hmm. And you should be able to categorize them and make it public. So we should be able to know that if you need interventional care, you have a heart attack and you must... These are a list of These are the list of hospitals there. you can go first of all. Mm -hmm. Because if a hospital does not have the equipment, the personnel to handle a gunshot injury, they have no business handling it. Mm -hmm. So our health sector requires a rebranding different from every other sector of the country. We need people with clear minds, clear vision, experience to step in and help the health sector. Remember I told you that the COVID made it clear. How many people drove their big cars during the lockdown? How many nightclubs were open? How many restaurants were open? How many schools were open? If we do not have good health, where will we be? What is our, our maternal mortality indices? Let me break these indices down to you in simple English. Mm -hmm. Out of every 1,000 women, five die. And you and I know that these indices are not correct. Mm -hmm. We know that more people die, but they are not reported. Mm -hmm. So a woman carries a baby up to nine months. Time to deliver, she dies in the process. So <sighs> we have a lot of facts that we must, you know, calm down and understand. You see when women give birth and they go to church and they give thanksgiving. It, it's serious. They've just escaped death. You know? <laughs> so, so, and these are all, obviously, according to you and Dr. Alera Roberts, uh, these are all signs of a failed system. But let's talk about um, the World Health Organization's ranking of Nigeria. We're the fourth worst healthcare system in the world. I'm, I'm very ashamed uh, of that. But uh, <laughs> that's not flat. That's quite flat. I thought we're the worst. Uh, well, um, <laughs> and, and I, I want to ask this question to you and Dr. Roberts. Getting a good president or a good leader or a good governor or a good chairman, does that automatically solve the problems that we're having in the health sector? Um, does that mean that, oh, well, we now have a good leader, so everything's going to be fine and dandy, or where do we start? Dr. Roberts? Well, well, obviously not. And Dr. Jacobo, thank you so much for, because you could hear the anger and passion. I've been lost for friends, and I'm hurt and pain. Like I said, there is no member of the healthcare team that can be trained in under five years, four, five years. Mm -hmm. And you are very correct. I have students in final year medicine who have been in medical school for 10 years. They have not repeated a single class. Yes. Two of them have not even failed a single exam or in-course assessment. It has been strikes that have delayed them. Those students have passed lab one, and four of them have pa pla passed lab two. They're not even waiting for induction, they're gone. There's no way you're going to build a new healthcare system in under 10 years at the minimum. Wow. Because you now have to go back and realize that, look, even from secondary school education, you need to be sure that the students who are going into the health sciences, and I'm talking about the nursing, um, physiotherapy, pharmacy, biomedical engineering, medical lab science, mm. have the requisite primary and uh, secondary school education mm. to get into those courses. And we are building from there. Mm. Wow. Um, so how is it? It's, it's, it's something that we have to actually sit down as a country and decide that this is important for us and we're going to do it in such a way that whether it is Tamodu or Lagbaja who is in power, the process continues. Okay. All right, All right Dr. Robert. Uh, finally, Dr. Korobo, um, I also just want to quickly squeeze in. Um, 
the issue of wages for doctors, um, mm. there have been many calls, several calls for, you know, government to look into it. And, and I mean, I mean, the issue of wages for a lot of people, including ASU, this is this has been a running battle True. with governments and not just the Buhari administration. I always like to emphasize successive government. Mm. Um, so talking about that and good leadership, because we can have a good leader, but True. is that enough for us to deal with the system? She says, we might not even get in 10 years, but where do we start? Well, I, I think first and foremost, when it comes to uh, the wages, um, ASU and doctors, we are both ASU members ourselves, <laughs> as well as doctors. Um, I think that the first thing here is to, you know, pay what you value. The value you give to a particular sector one of the ways you can express these values by wages. There are many other ways, of course, but mm -hmm. by wages. The wages are not enough because the economy is bad. The wages are not enough because fuel right now is somewhere between 250 to 280. Uh, most of the lecturers have children in private schools because the government schools are not bad. Uh, the, the hospitals are not working, so the wages are bad. So what I'm saying here is that if you want to make these wages have value, every other thing around must have value. Mm. The health sector, the education, security, all these have value. Then the wages will make some level of sense. Mm. <laughs> uh, for the aspect of leadership, where do we start? I, I think that we need leaders that are homegrown. We need a leader. The health sector will improve at the state level with a governor that has the right team and the right plan and understands that right now today you need to press the start button mm. she's saying 10 years i think 20. i think 20 years so 10 years is very nice but i think 20. so but it would be nice for the start button to be pressed mm -hmm. and to have legislation that God binds it so that whether party a or b comes in we don't press the refresh button what has happened in our country over time is that every government that comes clicks on refresh. So they don't look back at what successive governments have done. They just press the refresh button and start all over again. And in the health sector, this is very dangerous. Hmm. Imagine a health sector where a budget has been brought to build a primary health care center and train certain personnel. A new governor comes in, a new commissioner comes in, abandoned project. At the federal level, the federal level has to understand that the tertiary hospitals are the last hope. Now, if you have money, you wouldn't send your children to a government primary school. This is the reality. If you have money, you wouldn't send your children to a government secondary school. If you can afford it, your children won't go to a government tertiary school. But all of us, whether you're in private practice or not, when things get bad, the center where we all believe you can get that care is the government tertiary centers. Even the top tertiary centers, privately owned, would still refer patients to the government. So we need to get that right. And mm. the government has to understand. Well, I want to say thank you, gentle, gentlemen and lady. Dr. Alera Roberts is the Vice Chair of the Association of Public Health Physicians, Lagos Chapter. And Dr. Ibitro Kemi Kurubo is the past chairman of the uh, Nigerian Medical Association, River State Branch. Great conversation um, with you guys. And I'm hoping that as we get ready for the elections, these kinds of conversations will continuously be had because Nigerians need to be informed. But thank you. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. Thank you very much, Dr. Korobo. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, uh, that's it on the show tonight. I'm Mary Anacorn. Don't forget, if you haven't picked up your PVC, there's still time for you to do it because that is your passport to a new Nigeria. Happy holidays and have a good evening.